Uh, can you describe for us your first, first start in the majors? Uh, really good for four innings and then a disaster. No. Um, <laughs> Where was it? And, and, and well, who's the first batter you faced? Uh, well, you know, it's crazy. I don't remember the first batter. You know, they, uh, we opened up in Kansas City in 1988. And uh, I, I, I do remember this, that they brought me in for one inning uh, to get my feet wet. I was the fifth starter on the club. And in, in that one inning, I didn't give up any runs, but I did give up a hit to a guy by the name of George Brett. And I threw him a changeup, and I didn't even really have a changeup, so I think I made it up. <laughs> they told me throw a changeup. I'm like, I don't know if I have one of those. But, and I'm like, so I'll throw it. And I, I think he hit a double off the wall. And I'm like, you know. Welcome to the bigs. And then, yeah. And, then my, and, I, and I, I remember it was like, even after hanging out with guys like Mickey Mantle and mm. Thurman Munson, I, I used to go fishing with Thurman Munson and, and the Bobby Mercers. And I could go on and on and on. Mm. But even after growing up and living that environment, I was just like everyone else. Their first pitch, their first start. I was so nervous. Um, I remember in Kansas City, I, I came in from the bullpen and I'm thrown from the stretch and my back leg is shaking. I couldn't get it. And you know, you, and I was so nervous and so tight, I couldn't swallow. It's like my lips were like stuck together. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And, uh, and, and then my first start was against uh, the 1987 world champion Minnesota Twins in the Metro Dome. And I remember they telling me, they're like, Todd, it's, you know, and it was their opening day. Hitters, so it was their home too. opener, yeah. was my first start. Right. And they'd coming off a World Series, and they're like, Todd, you're not going to be able to hear. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And there's this place called the Metrodome. I've never been in it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I remember taking the mound, and I was like, oh, dear God, you know, what have I gotten myself into? But... It was crazy. After four innings, I think I'd given up one hit. I think, I, I think the score was 0-0. I'd punched out nine guys in four innings. Your catcher is whom? Pat Borders. Okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then in the fifth inning, and by the way, I'm pitching against the Cy Young Award winner for the world champion Minnesota Twins in their home opener after Frank Viola. Right? right? I'm like, man, that's a... Good draw there, right? It's like, let's get this rookie. Ha, ha, let's get ha. him. Let's get his feet wet. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I remember the fifth inning, a uh, guy by the name of Gladden came up in the fifth. He hit a double, and that place erupted. Like, mm. I mean, when I say erupted, that place went, I mean, every seat, it was sold out. It was like this wave, but the sound in that place because of the dome and, and the whole deal. I mean, it was, cr I mean, it was crazy. And, and then I remember there was a guy coming to the plate by the name of Kirby Puckett. And, uh, and, and Borders came to the mound, and, and, and he's screaming, and I can't hear him. Wow. I mean, he's literally screaming. And <laughs> i got to watch my language. My wife is here. All right, guys. I'm sure she's never heard you swear. All right. But Borders is yelling at me. You got to get the ball in on this guy. And I'm like, I can't. I'm like, dude, I can't hear you, man. And we're yelling, and there's so much noise. And then Borders finally, are you guys OK if I say one cuss word today? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, are you OK? Yeah. This, I'm just going to say one, just because you'll miss the point, right? <laughs> Borders is yelling, and he finally says, if you don't get the effing, I won't say it, <laughs> ball in on this guy, he's going to take you deep. Mm. I'm like, that's awesome psychology from my catcher. <laughs> Very tactful. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, bro. You got a lot of confidence in me, I see. And uh, as it turned out, I didn't get out of the fifth inning. Mm. And, and, uh, but it was, it was incredible. But it was kind of... That game was really kind of like a reflection of how I pitched here. I would have moments of brilliance, and then, no, and then the polar opposite, mm. very difficult time. Mm. And it was because of youth and immaturity sure. and all the things. And you know, I'm playing with a club that is expected to win from the people in Toronto um, and from the baseball world. Here I'm a young guy, and I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to 
get all of this? Well, to put it in historical context too, you're starting in 88 after the collapse of 87 where you know, the Jays had an incredible team in 87 and we all thought that they were going to walk and then, then, then they have that terrible last 10 games that last week against Detro Detroit and they collapse and they lose. So you're coming in at a time where it's like, you know, you're a young kid, maybe this is our way to the promise of the future. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I talked in the beginning about you kind of being a, con a constant. Those years from uh, 88 to 91, you know, there was a lot of ups and downs and a lot of, unf a lot of unfulfilled promise, a lot of unrequited with 89 and 91 as well. Can you talk about what it was like to sort of suffer through that time before, the, before glory eventually? Well, I got to tell you guys the 89 story because, you know, in 88, they finally sent me back to AAA um, August 1st. And it was so funny. It was like, I was like, oh, thank God I can get out of here because, huh. you know, I was probably the worst pitcher in baseball. And, you know, I come with all of this promise and people are like, man, who is this guy? Right. And 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 then the the conversations that were developed in my youth where this guy's not like his father and he's mm. not in, you know, that was really becoming a big deal. And and so when I, when I went to AAA, it was like, man, you know, it was a, it, you have this sense that, you know, you can dominate AAA. And I did. And I dominated. And and then I remember when I, I got called back and, and Jimmy Williams said to me, he said, Todd, he says, there's no difference, man. We just need you to be you. And I'm like, yeah, it seems like a big difference to me. But um, and then in and then in September, I didn't I didn't I didn't pitch much. But uh, they brought me in another bullpen a few times. And then Pat Gillick actually last day of the season says, Hey, Todd, we want you to go to winter ball. And I'm like, I just had a pool. listen. I just had a terrible season. I wasn't thinking about playing baseball. I was thinking about going home, mm. hunting and fishing with my father and my brother. I wanted to get away. And I was like, okay. I said, okay. I, I, and he says, look, we need you to go learn. Now I'm 22. Mm. And, you know, and after having the goal of, of getting to the big leagues and doing that whole deal, now once you get there, now they're asking me, will you go to winter ball? And they didn't say, will you go? They said, the only way you make our club next year is if you go to winter ball and you learn to develop a new pitch. Hmm. So I had to go de develop a whole new pitch as a major league pitcher just to make the club the next year. So I was thinking winter ball, like Arizona, Florida, you know, somewhere would have been awesome. And I said, well, where, where am I going to go? And they said, Barquisi Meadow, Venezuela. <laughs> I still can't spell Barquisi Meadow. I don't ever want to learn how. And I went to Venezuela in the middle of a presidential election, and it was crazy. And wow. And, but they sent borders. <laughs> I'm like, they sent him to catch me. I'm like, too bad for you. you know? uh, and it was fun. And it, without borders being there, it would have been crazy. But I remember when I get to Venezuela, right, they take your passport. Like, there's no, it's, it's, you're not escaping. And I remember after the first night, I said to borders, I said, man, we got to break out of this. Like, I'm thinking of, like, jailbreak. I go, we got to get the hell out of here. Where are you man. living down there? Like, where? In somewhere. a hotel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and every morning, it was like they played the salsa. You know, and, the, and I ended up punching the deal. And you guys can imagine what happened. But I tore the speakers out of the wall. I was like, I can't take it anymore. But anyways, <laughs> 1989 to make the club. Mm -hmm. um, and and what's, sorry, like to, May 15th. What's the pitch you had to learn to throw? I, I had to learn how to throw a slider. Okay. Yeah, they wanted me to learn. You know, I was a power pitcher. Uh, I could throw my curveball over the plate about one every three or four times, right? Not very good. And they were like, man, we need you to learn how to throw a breaking ball for a strike. Mm -hmm. They thought that I was built for a slider, and, and they were right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so I came back, I make the club, and then they fired Jimmy Williams. Mm -hmm. I remember I was with Borders, we were roommates, and I said, man. And I, I really liked Jimmy, and I had a lot of respect for Jimmy Williams. But I remember I said, man, maybe, and, and they were, I was kind of a swing guy, and they would fit me in, and they were saying, yeah, and, and I remember saying to boarders at our apartment, maybe I'll finally start getting more time. Hmm. I, I got a lot more time in AAA because they sent me to AAA. Cito Gaston's first meeting and first decision, and it wasn't his decision, but his first move was to send me to AAA. And I remember Cito didn't like sending me down because it was his first day as a manager. And, and, uh, but I went down. I went down mad, by the way. 